Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning. Thank you so much, and welcome to the Valder Beebe Show. We're live here in Dallas, Texas. I want my audience to know that October is RSV Awareness Month, and Dr. Michael Forbes, along with Vanessa Lake, Le- how do I say your last name, Vanessa? Lachey. Lachey. But it does look oh. like it's spelled Lachey, so either way, I'm fine. Okay, Lachey. They're here, and Vanessa's a mom of three, so she's going to give us some great information, and they're going to raise awareness. If I could start with you, Dr. Forbes, sure. what is RSV? Give us the actual word for the acronym. Sure. RSV stands for Respiratory Syncytial Virus. That's a mouthful, and so we refer to it as RSV. RSV causes a, an epidemic every year. It is a highly contagious, very common virus. It's in the same family as the flu virus, influenza. It's responsible for about 125,000 hospitalizations every year and about 200 deaths every year. So a pretty big deal. Now, most kids will get infected by the virus by the age of two. Uh, But if you're you're a preterm baby, meaning less than 36 weeks gestational age, that infection can become a very serious infection uh, as those babies are considered high risk. Vanessa, I'm going to switch over to you because you're a mom of three. Have you had an encounter with this? I have, and um, it was one of the hardest times of mine and my husband's lives. Um, Our youngest, just as Dr. Forbes said, was a high-risk baby because he was born at 30 weeks. And I knew that he was a preemie, so I knew that there were things that would go along with that that I would have to be on the lookout for and aware of. But what I didn't know about was RSV. I had heard the letters in passing, and honestly, I thought it was a condition. I didn't realize that it's an actual common contagious virus that when it is comes in contact with a high-risk baby can be fatal. And um, in fact, my son was misdiagnosed a couple times. People are like, oh, it must be the cold or the flu. So we had him tested for the flu, and they said it's not the flu. So it's a virus, a cold virus, he'll get over it. And after almost a week of a high temperature and me trying to keep him comfortable, a nebulizing machine, I'm like, this is not right. Something is going on here. So all of my mommy's senses were ting- tingling. Um, We ended up taking him to the hospital, and he ended up having to get admitted and hooked up to a breathing machine for six days because he did have RSV, and since he was a high-risk baby, his body wasn't able to fight it off. Um, I just, I'm so upset at myself that I didn't know what it was because I always tried to be overprepared, and that's why I'm so proud to be on your show and sitting here with Dr. Forbes, and I've partnered with AstraZeneca to help spread awareness. Just as you said, October is RSV Awareness Month because November to March is critical season for prevention, and there's no treatment now for RSV, so we need to try to stop it from spreading. I know that probably happened a while ago, but I can feel your emotions behind that, and and obviously. Yeah, as a mommy, you never never forget sitting there looking at your baby on a breathing machine in a NICU. Um, It was actually last RSV season, last January, and um, I just hope no parents have to go through that, and if you do, I'm sorry, and I'm here for you, and I just want to help spread the word and make people aware and do as much as we can to help prevent it. Thank you for sharing. Dr. Forbes, is Vanessa's story uh, uh, pretty, I'm going to say, par for the course with a premature baby? It it sure can be. I think that the the reality is for preterm babies, they are vulnerable because of the things that we talked about, their lungs and their immune system. We also know that preterm babies uh, are about five times more likely to be admitted to the hospital uh, than term babies uh, in the first six months of life. So they're, they're quite vulnerable. Uh, and once they're in the hospital, uh, again, they can be very, very sick, just like uh, Vanessa's baby was. And what, do, what does the parent look for? Maybe she thought the baby had a cold or something. What, what do we look for? Sure. It, it starts out like the cold, uh, with sneezing, maybe a runny nose. But then it gets worse, particularly in, those, uh, in babies that are born preterm. You want to watch for those symptoms. And so the baby may breathe a lot harder. They may actually work to breathe. Uh, you'll see their nostrils flaring or they're, they're sucking in their, their uh, chest as they're breathing. 
they develop a cough or wheezing, but it doesn't go away. So they continue to cough, they continue to wheeze. They have fevers. Anything over 100.4 rectally uh, would, would be a cause for concern. And then they, they sometimes even get de-energized, so they're not eating as much, they're not, they're not staying awake as much. Any of those signs are, are worrisome for severe RSV and should warrant a call to your pediatrician. Vanessa, you have partnered to give my parents some more uh, help. Tell me about your partnership again. I did. I'm sorry. I'm like, I, I literally am hearing him list these symptoms, and I'm immediately brought back to seeing my son in this condition, and I thought I was over. I literally am. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, oh, I'm that's so okay. proud to partner with AstraZeneca because this is so important to me. Um, <laughs> wow. No, it's, That's okay. I told you I could I feel your I think I got emotions. when you said, I know, and when he started talking about the de-energized, I just thought, well, this is, he's just fighting this. Um, you got to talk to your healthcare provider. You have to find out if your baby is high risk, and, and if they are, you need to be extra careful. Thank you so much. Um, especially during November to March, you need to wash your hands as often as you can, wash the baby's hands as often as you can, change their clothes, change the bedding, because germs do live on clothes and bedding. If you have a sick baby or a sibling, I have two older kids, try to isolate the sick one as, as best as you can, especially if a high-risk baby is in the house, because this isn't like, oh, well, germs are good for them and their body will build immunity. It's not the case with a high-risk baby. I am walking proof from the bottom and top of my heart how severe it is and how we need to understand that when you check for cold and flu, also in the back of your mind should be, is this RSV? Let me ask my pediatrician, let me ask my healthcare provider. And like I said, there's no treatment right now, so prevention is key. No question. Vanessa, I want to thank you so much for sharing and being so, as we say in today's modern times, transparent. Thank you. I want to thank, I want to thank you for that. And I want to ask you, can we watch you coming up on some kind of Christmas movie real soon? Oh, wow. You must have Googled this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you know what? It's fun when I get to mix business and pleasure. Um, I did a Christmas movie because I want something I can sit down with my kids and watch. And it really is a beautiful thing to be able to evolve, not just as a mommy, but as a working actress um, and a host into things that that go along with being a mommy. So I play a mom in a movie um, on Lifetime. It's called A Twist of Christmas, and it's out in December. Well, we will be watching you. We'll also watch you in Top Chef Junior. We know kids a little again, bit about cooking you. with kids. <laughs> Doctor, I want to thank you and Vanessa. And Vanessa, thank you so very much. I really appreciate you guys talking to my audience. Thank you. I do want to just suggest that if anybody has questions, to go to rsvprotection.com because I know that while we sit here and talk with you, um, there may be questions later after after um, our interview, and I want them to be able to have a hub to go to. Be blessed, and thank you for all that you do. Thank okay. you so much.